On behalf of Golden Eagle Log Homes, we welcome you to tonight's webinar called Interior and Exterior Design Elements. I'm just going to review a few house housekeeping things with you before we begin. Uh, the first of that is we encourage you to ask questions during the presentation. And to do so, you should see a questions panel on your screen. So when you have that question, send it our way. We're going to hold on to those and we'll go through them at the end of the presentation. Another thing for you to know is we are going to record this presentation. You'll receive a copy of it in your email within 24 hours. So that is something that you can review in the future or in case you have to leave us early tonight, uh, don't worry, you won't miss out. That will also include the question and answer session. Tonight's presentation will be given by Justin Jankowski. Justin actually has a degree in home design and Justin was designing homes for 12 years before he began in sales. So Justin is the perfect guy to talk to you tonight about the neat things that you can do with the interior and exterior of your home. Justin, here you are. Okay. Okay, thanks, Zach. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody for taking time out of their schedule to, to attend the seminar. I, I certainly appreciate it. Um, and, and like Zach said, I, I spent most of my, my career here at Golden Eagle Log Homes in the design and engineering department. And I have a degree in residential and light commercial design. So while I love every part of the process through the home building process, um, I certainly enjoy the design process with the customer designing the home to, to the features and uh, the items and const newest construction trends and ideas um, that are out there. So <clears throat> a little background uh, about Golden Eagle Lodge Homes. Uh, we've been in business now for 51 years, um, been family owned ever since. And uh, in that time frame, we've now built over 5,000 homes in 49 states. Um, we do a number of different styles of homes from half log to full log, timber frame, this any wood, uh, wood structure type of home uh, we'll, we'll build and design. So uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let, let's dig into to the presentation. So uh, tonight's presentation is interior and exterior design elements. Basically what it is, it's a collection of, of ideas and, and pictures of, of what uh, our clients have done in the past. Um, and, and hopefully you can gather some, some ideas to, to incorporate into your new home. So I'm going to first start with with the interior of the home, um, and we'll dig right in. We'll we'll jump right into the kitchen. That's probably one of the most important rooms in the home. Um, the most time talked about, design spent on, money spent is right in the kitchen, and uh, and for good reason. Um, it seems to be the the place where everybody gathers and and spends quite a bit of time. So this is a this is a great picture. This is a picture of a kitchen from one of our lake house plants. It's it's well designed. Um, it's got a very open concept, and there's a lot of features in this in this kitchen that I like to point out. Um, you know, good use of stone in in this kitchen. You'll see on the kitchen island, um, we see cultured stone used in a lot of different areas of the home, and, and I'll get more into that later in the presentation. But um, you'll see good use of cabinetry in the kitchen. With which, what I mean is different heights. Um, different door styles you'll see up here. We've got some glass in the door. Um, some people are concerned sometimes that they can't get that tile backsplash um, with their log home, and you certainly can. You, can. you can look behind the island there, and you can still get uh, that tile backsplash. A uh, couple other things in this plan. You can see all modern-day amenities. Um, don't need to hold back at all um, with your log or timber frame home. Nice copper hood you'll see here. You can see my cursor up there. A um, couple of other things to point out in this picture, chinking too. Um, chinking is, is simply cosmetic now in, in our style of home with the, the kiln drying process. Um, <clears throat> so some people are um, still like that chinking look and you can certainly still do it. So uh, designing the kitchen, you'll see here at Golden Eagle, we do have our own in-house design um, staff, basically. Um, we'll design that kitchen for you. Um, our, our selections coordinator will go through that kitchen cabinet by cabinet and talk about all the different features that you can have in your new home. The, uh, the features with, with cabinet design nowadays is, is limitless. It's unbelievable all the different um, options you can have in your kitchen. And again, if you look down here in the lower right-hand picture, um, this is another lake house plan. Um, 
a little different look. He still has a tile backsplash, but notice the different heights in the cabinetry. Very popular. Gives it a lot of dimension. Nice big crown molding on the top of those cabinets. Um, and painted cabinets as well. So even in your in your log or timber home, you can have painted cabinets. I think it goes really well um, with, with the log and, and the tongue and groove coloring that they have behind it. <clears throat> But back to the design. I mean, we'll design the home for you, and then we'll design the kitchen to fit. That's the beauty of it. No, no, uh, no worries or stress about is this kitchen going to fit, uh, you know, with my log style, with my wall finishes. That's the beauty of the complete package with Golden Eagle. We, we, we design the home, and then we design these components and kitchen cabinets to fit the home. Uh, our selections quarter, you'll see the design there on the far left. Um, he'll design it. He'll give you 3D rendering. Just see the rendering up top, and then that's it in real life. He'll actually take his design that he designed for you from his software and, and import it into our design software and make sure that it fits right down to, to the eighth inch. Make sure that that window is right underneath the kitchen, or make sure that sink is right underneath the kitchen window. Um, <clears throat> make sure all the, the moldings and and, and uh, extended styles are in place so it looks nice up against that full log wall. <clears throat> so moving on to the, to the next slide is, um, like I was saying, the, the features and, uh, with cabinetry are endless. I mean, it's, it's strictly not limited to the kitchen anymore. These three pictures right here are walk-in closets. Um, they're, they're basically walk-in rooms if you see how big they are the size of some bedrooms and you see a good use of cabinetry in each of these. The, the one on the far left here on the left um, actually has an island in it with with some granite countertop on it and look at the nice uh, the trim work the library molding vertical here um, drawers over here to the right <clears throat> and up here in the upper right you will see the nice um, space shelving for shoes um, it's unbelievable, unbelievable the, the features now in cabinetry. Drop zones. Here's another area where cabinetry is used. This a drop zone is, is the area back um, maybe between the house and the garage. Where you come in from, from the garage on a, on a daily basis. Um, people are just so into many sports, extracurriculars, hobbies. Just have more stuff. And uh, this is a great way to, to organize and hide all of that, all of that stuff. You'll see a lacrosse stick here, or uh, maybe it's a motorcycle helmet, or boots, or hockey sticks. Um, it's a great way to keep that stuff organized with a nice bench, some lockers, and then even some upper cabinetry in in uh, in this in this design. <clears throat> um, great place to use a utilize a barn door. Barn doors are very very popular right now, uh, and this is a great place to use it. Basically, the door is going to be open probably 90, 95% of the time. Um, so you'll still be able to see that door. Um, but that time where you want it shut, um, you don't have time to clean up the mess. When, when guests are coming over, you can simply shut that door and hide the mess. Um, laundry rooms kind of incorporate into the, the same area as maybe a drop zone. Um, back by the garage, maybe it's a mud room. Um, again, great use of cabinetry in here. You'll see how we kind of hid the uh, the washer and dryer with the side panel the, and, the, and the taller panels here. Put a countertop up above it. Um, create a nice folding station. Um, different heights in the cabinetry as well. And look at the nice trim work under cabinet molding. Excuse me. Um, home offices. Home offices. People uh, work uh, from home with the use of the internet and email. A lot of people are working from home or home-based businesses. Um, this is uh, something we're incorporating into a lot of plans now. Um, maybe it's a, a second or third or fourth bedroom that uh, that works as a home office as well. This, this particular picture is strictly a home office, um, as you can see by by the. The technology that's in this room, again, great use of cabinetry um, and all the modern day amenities. Um, you certainly don't need to hold back in your log or timber frame home. Um, you can see up here on the upper left hand corner of this picture in-house speakers, um, surround sound in this house, 
can see a, a TV mounted up here and look at all the uh, the computer systems that are all hidden nicely um, within the cabinetry so certainly don't need to hold back um, you know if you do a lot of work from home let's let's take a let's take a look at that plan and, and design a space for you so you can comfortably work from home when need be <clears throat> tiled showers walk-in showers um, pretty much a norm now in the master suites um, a lot of people um, will design a are thinking ahead um, the term used is, is aging in place you know this is probably going to uh, be the last home that they build so they're kind of thinking ahead and uh, maybe we, we design that that walk-in shower if you see down here in the lower right hand side it doesn't have a curb or, or no step into that shower um, the floor is simply sloped to to the drain and uh, you can if if for, God forbid you end up with a wheelchair or a walker you can easily get into that shower um, a nice glass wall on this shower as well really opens that that bathroom up too um, doesn't feel it closed in so you can see through that glass wall into the shower it makes the room feel bigger than, than maybe it actually is <clears throat> and again on the other two to the left um, great use of stone in here and uh, some cool pebble work on the floor and then they brought it up the walls very cool so and a lot of times we'll heat some of these floors in the walk-in showers or in the bathrooms a couple different ways to do that if it's just uh, if you just want to heat the floor in the bathroom um, probably simply probably simply use an electrical pad underneath that tile and it heats that that cold tile it's nice and warm when you step onto it so it's something to think about <clears throat> um, pet washing stations uh, uh, <clears throat> these are areas basically back maybe towards where, where you enter from the uh, um, from the garage again um, pets are, are very important to people to a lot of people they're, they're part of the family and uh, people take uh, take good care of their pets um, the, the picture on the left here um, the gentleman was a hunter um, the wife still loved the pets still wanted them in the house but uh, she needed them clean before they came in the house so there was a space design where the, the dogs could hop right in the shower and uh, could get cleaned off from uh, the dust and dirt uh, from a nice long hunt and then come in the house and, and enjoy the warmth of the house after a nice long hunt. <clears throat> um, entertaining spaces. We are designing a lot of rooms designed just for entertaining. And uh, this is a great picture of a wine room that, that we designed um, up in New Hampshire. So. Um, not sure if that's a nice enough wine, but I guess it's a good start. <laughs> but uh, great use of stone here again. A um, lot of different features in this. Got some timbers up on the up on the walls and the ceilings. Um, again, the glass wall kind of showed off that staircase, uh, that log staircase that they have. Here's a here's a picture of a of a lower level, um, a basement, uh, uh, maybe maybe a man cave. Um, you know, and a nice pool table with a, with a bar close by, um, great space, open space uh, for entertaining. A lot of guests in this in this room here. Um, home theaters. This is uh, TVs are, are certainly not getting any smaller. Um, all the equipment and in in wall speakers um, are getting more complex every year. So. Uh, we've done a lot of spaces um, designed just for for watching movies. A lot of times these spaces are are found in the lower level where there's not a lot of natural light uh, to give any glare to the TV, but uh, can certainly be designed anywhere in the house. Uh, simply gave some theater seating very easily with uh, with simply raising that uh, that second tier. Of chairs, you'll see some nice log trim along the bottom, and some lighting. Very easily done. Goes well with the rest of the home. If you see through the door, you can see the nice log and the stone flows very well with this style of home. So, with uh, with your log or timber home, there's there's definitely some some nice ways to add um, some nice looking staircases. There's a number of different stairways that we offer at Golden Eagle. Um, two of them are right here. Um, the picture on the left is what we call our half log stairs. 
Uh, you'll see the stringers on the outside, the half log stringer is on the outside of the treads. Um, very openness, open feel to it. You can see down into the lower level, into the stairs below these types of stairs in. So a lot of people will um, maybe add what we call hickory treads down to the basement because you will see those stairs going down as well. It's a very open feel to this to this style of, of, of stairs. So if the stairs end up being in, in the common area of the home where a lot of these stairways are, you know, in the great room, kitchen, dining area, um, it's a nice little feature to have. Um, they're actually pieces of artwork. They're, they're very, very appealing. So this is the half log stairs on the left hand side. The picture on the right is what we call our full log stairs. A um, little different look here. You'll see the stringer is actually underneath the half log treads, underneath the treads. Um, and they're hard to see, but there are now some black brackets that get attached to that stringer, and then they hold and cup those treads and uh, give it a nice look, feel those, those, give it a nice feel. Those black metal brackets um, are very popular. So very open feel. Um, as you can see, the stair here is right in that entryway. Um, guests are going to walk into that home and get that immediate wow factor uh, from that staircase. So timber framing um, or exposed beam package that we offer um, is becoming more and more popular every year. Um, this type of package uh, can certainly be done in a number of different ways. These these timbers and um, timber trusses can be structural or they can be decorative. Um, the most way that uh, the most way that, that our customers tend to lean towards is the exposed beam package, where it is they are non-structural members, um, becomes much more cost-effective this way. Gives you a little more freedom to do what you want. You can place the trusses, the timbers, the accents wherever you'd like. You're not locked into any on-center spacing. Um, you can put it, uh, these timbers and accents in the, in the common area of the home, say, again, the great room, kitchen, dining area, um, put them through that area, and then maybe hold back in the, be in the bedrooms and in, in bathrooms where you, where you don't need them and most people won't see, uh, become much more cost effective. Um, so you'll see right here these trusses up in the, if you can see my cursor on the upper right hand picture, these, these accents are added in as decorative pieces. Um, you can decide on what uh, style you want with this type of with this type of construction. Um, you can add some black metal brackets. See down here in this picture can be used on the interior or exterior of the home. This next slide turned out very well. This this um, this structure turned out very great. Um, you'll see the, it went really complex with the timber accents and the trusses. Um, a barrel style truss here um, went with a number of different sizes which really gives it some dimension. Uh, went with some 10 by 10 um, and some 8 by 8 I believe in here. The, the timbers and trusses are then hand hewn. Um, they're given a different color which really make them pop against the, uh, the tongue and groove. Uh, you can see the tongue and groove is ran in a different direction than, than normally. Um, so as you can see, a lot of a lot of flexibility with this type of of construction, the timber frame or the exposed beam packages that we offer. This is a great slide. I love this. This is basically the same house, um, same floor plan, I should say, um, variations of our North Carolina plan, uh, but you'll see three different looks here. The one on the upper right is, is basically a log home. You see all wood there, wood floors, wood walls, wood ceilings, a uh, lot of log beams and accents. Um, the one on the right-hand side here, that's our exposed beam package. Um, you can see a lot, uh, a very different look. Um, added some more drywall on here, added some color. Um, it's, it's really up to you. We're trying to show you that it's really up to you what you want to do we try to give you as many ideas as we can, and uh, and you choose the direction you want to go. Uh, custom carvings. This is very popular. This is something unique that you can do with these style of homes. Is add these custom carvings. Um, we've got a local carver here that will carve just about anything. 
Um, he'll carve into mantles, he'll carve railing posts, he'll carve structural posts, um, he'll carve your name into a mantle, wh whatever you want. You give him a picture of a, a boat, a Harley, a snowmobile. Um, like you see in this picture, it was, it was the customer's, the client's home, um, and he carved it into the mantle for him. So um, those, those little unique little touches that you can do to this these style of homes um, really adds, really makes them unique. Here's a good slide, a good use of, of cultured stone. Cultured, or I, I should really call it manufactured stone, can be used anywhere in the home. That, that is the beauty of it. Um, you don't need a, a full foundation to support that stone anymore. Um, the color is more consistent with this type uh, of stone. Um, it's a manufactured product. So what it is, it's, it's colored concrete that's been poured, in, or poured into a mold, um, molded right from real stone. Uh, it's popped out and it's still uh, applied one individual stone at a time, um, grouted in between one individual stone or in, in, in between each stone. And uh, I get asked the question all the time, is this, is this real or fake? And, you know, if you have to ask, I, I think it's doing its job. Um, probably 90, 95% of the homes we sell are the, the manufactured stone. So you'll see in the lower right-hand picture here, they did use it on their fireplace. Um, but then also on their on their stove hood, they put the stone above the stove hood all the way to the ceiling. Um, again, we see it a lot on snack bars, on the kitchen island, um, wainscoting. You can see the little corner here. He used it as wainscoting as well. Um, and this client used it in his bathroom. Trimmed out the doors very nicely. Nice little touch with the wagon wheel. Great shot. Yep. So moving into um, that that same that same that that bathroom I just showed you, this is the master suite of that bathroom. Uh, master suites are your own little sanctuary. Sometimes um, you can see this master suite has a a couch in it. Over on the top left hand picture, you'll see a a, a tea bar, a tea counter, um, where they could wake up right away in the morning, make their tea, or or maybe it's coffee. Um, again, great use of stone in this room. Vaulted ceilings. Um, put some tie beam accents in here as well. Decorative tie beams. In our type of construction, the way we construct our homes, those are decorative. So if you like them, if you don't like them, you can add them, subtract them, move around, um, design different different uh, um, designs with with those types of, of beams as well. You can do whatever you want there because they are non-structural. <clears throat> Again, great use of cabinetry in this bathroom. Nice set of nice set of drawers and then doors separating the two sinks. Custom wall finishes. Um, some people get concerned that uh, that they can't do drywall or add color with their log home, and you certainly can. Um, again, it's personal preference. I've had a lot of customers do all wood. Um, I've had a lot of customers that do a lot of drywall on the inside. And add some color and add some different textures. Um, th this partic these particular pictures are, are faux finishes that uh, some of our clients had done. Um, I, I don't like to call them stencils because they are they're they're three D, they're three dimensional, they're little layers of plaster and paint, uh, and given some real texture and some real dimension. So even in even in your full log or timber frame home, you can certainly add a lot of color. And here's a here's a log home, a lot of wood in this particular home, but uh, they added some color with uh, with changing up the color on different on different pieces and adding some accent colors. You see a lot of a lot of the wood or log, I should say, is stained a darker color. That gable end wall is dark brown. A structural post you see right here in the front and that tie beam are, are stained a much darker color than the uh, than the tongue and groove in the ceiling. So it makes them pop, makes them stand out a little bit. But if you see the little insert down in the lower left hand corner, um, they did add some drywall as well. Added some very bright, vibrant colors. And, uh, and I, think it, I think it really turned out well. So a couple of different ways you can add some, some color and some texture to your home. Okay, so now we're going to pop out, uh, we're going to jump to the outside of the home. We're going to start with the, some of the exterior features of, of these homes. 
And uh, these are some great pictures of, uh, of some homes that we've recently done. Uh, we'll, we'll start with, we'll, we'll, we'll get into log first of all. And uh, like I said earlier, with, with, uh, with Golden Eagle, you can have your choice of half log or full log. Um, really, it really makes no difference to us which way you want to, which way you want to run with it. But uh, these two homes right here, one is full log, one is half log, and uh, and you could not tell the difference. They look the same, um, same features on them. The beauty of of our half log is the fasteners are all hidden, and uh, and you can simply you can have all the same features as a full log home looks just like a full log home. Um, I guess the we sell more full log than anything uh, every year. It, it always seems to be that uh, people come to us for the authentic full log home. Um, about 60% of our sales are, are full log. Uh, another 30% is the half log, and, and that timber frame makes up the rest of that timber frame more exposed beam. is becoming more and more popular every year. Um, but uh, half log construction uh, maybe gives you a little more freedom to do what you want on the inside if you wanted some more tongue and groove or some more drywall. Uh, maybe a customer will lean towards half log then, but uh, we'll do both. So whichever whichever way you want to handle it. <clears throat> but uh, again, coming to Golden Eagle, you do have a lot of options. You're going to have um, the choice of 38 different log profiles between 8 inch, 10 inch, and 12 inch log. So you'll have your choice of round, D shape, square. Uh, the, the options the options are almost endless with Golden Eagle. So um, you'll have your choice of, of different corners as well. You see five different corner options here. Um, starting at the top left is the vertical corner, um, available in round or square. It's a nice, sleek, big, round or, or vertical corner at each outside corner. Um, the next corner there, B, is, is the button, kick, button pass corner. That, that seems to be our most popular corner um, for whatever reason. Just just seems to be more popular. Um, the next one, C, is, is the saddle notch corner. So now you'll see every corner has a, um, or I'm sorry, every course has a corner cut into it. Um, the best way to describe this corner is uh, the Lincoln log sets where, where the one course is, is coked out to fit uh, the course below it. Um, the next one, D, is dovetail. And uh, that uh, kind of resembles uh, maybe the, the drawers that you see on, on your cabinetry. Um, it's a nice complex looking corner, a nice tight looking corner. Um, and E, the curve cut corner, where now you'll see that saddle notch corner has a, has a curve cut into it. Um, gives a nice little unique touch to it that's, that's usually done on site. But um, no corner, we, we feel no corner is more structurally sound than the other. Um, it really comes down to personal preference, what kind of look that you're going for. Um, the, the vertical corner is, is the least expensive. The, the button pass is what you'll see in our standard uh, pricing revealed online. And then the C&D dovetail corner curve cut um, are step up from the button pass corners. Um, just because that we pre-cut all the corners here at Golden Eagle uh, for the contractor. He doesn't have to cut them on site. Um, they're all precision cut with our machinery here. Um, so there is, there is a charge for, for cutting those corners here. And uh, with the saddle notch and dovetail, you just double the amount of corners that, that you put on the home. So let's say button pass, you have 13 corners, saddle notch and dovetail, you now have 26 corners on each 8-foot vertical corner. So that's where the extra cost comes in. But uh, it's up to you, whatever, whatever look you want, you're trying to achieve. Um, and then also you'll have four different textures you'll be able to put on those logs or timbers. Um, the first one here on the far left is our semi-smooth. Um, comes out uh, semi-smooth semi from our machinery. There probably might have to be some light sanding that might need to be done on site, but um, uh, essentially smooth. Uh, the step from there, the next step up is, is the standard peel. Uh, the standard peel now gives it that semi-rustic feel to it. Um, the semi-smooth and the standard peel are, are right in our standard pricing that you see revealed online. Uh, the, next, the next one over to the right is the hand peeled. So now um, this, this log is actually peeled by hand. Um, has to be each log is in each, each individual log is hand touched by, by one of the guys out in the yard and peeled. Um, same thing with hand hewn. Hand hewning is, is really left for our square log. 
it gives it that ad style, old ad style look um, that you see on some of those Appalachian style log homes or on those on those timber frame homes uh, for people that want to add some some more texture and dimension to those timbers. So um, I keep reiterating, but a lot of feet, a lot of options when you come to Golden Eagle. 38 different log profiles, four different um, corners, five different four corner styles, and, and four different textures. So no two homes are ever going to be the same. Um, each home is unique in its own way. This is a great picture. This is a, I love using this picture. It's uh, we've got a lot of things going on with this home. Um, this is this is actually a half log home. Um, and it has the exposed beam or timber frame look on the inside. So you can certainly match match the two. You can match the or mix and match the the log and the timber frame homes. They it, they go well, very well together. Um, but the reason I brought this picture up is they've got a lot of different textures on the outside of this home. I if I can get uh, I tell my customers if I can get you to use three different textures on the outside of that home, um, it really becomes very unique and very appealing. Um, what, I, what I mean by textures is, is maybe sidings or exterior facades. Uh, if you see down here on the walkout wall on the lower level, um, there's some stone. Then above that, we have some some half log, which carries through to that uh, that technically that first floor. And then up in the gable, we have some cedar shakes. So you can see three different textures right on right on this end of the home. I think it really looks sharp, um, breaks up those those lines. Um, and, it, and it really looks really looks sharp. Um, they also did the western roof too. I'll get into that a little bit later. Western roof uh, is this little piece up here on top of the roof. Really, um, no structural or, or ventilation um, added to that. It it just breaks up that that big expanse of roof and shingles, um, makes it more interesting, more appealing. <clears throat> so. Here are some of the options to do in uh, in the gables um, or the dormers of the home. Um, there's really a lot of different uh, sidings or, or textures that you can put up there. And, and the first one, starting on the left-hand column, is the cedar shake. Um, that that's what you'll see in the in the in the pricing right, right online. Um, I think I think it looks sharp. Uh, you can you can even break up those cedar shakes with a, what we'll call a, a turkey track. You see in the lower left-hand corner. Um, some half log pieces orientated in, in what we feel looks like uh, what a turkey would make, a turkey track would, would look like in the snow or the mud. Um, this particular customer in the upper left hand corner added uh, a nice little accent truss up in that gable and uh, he extended that uh, that rake out a foot, popped it out a little bit um, and added some dimension to that fascia. Uh, the, next, the next column over is the is the log you can certainly run if you want log all the way through the gable um, by all means put it through the gable and or the the dormer you can have the the same corner style that you would on your home you can put up in the dormer as well and then uh, the next one over to the right is a polymer shake so some customers were looking for a maintenance free option when it came to uh, the dormers and gables so we do offer a polymer shake um, available in a number of different colors. Uh, it's virtually maintenance free up there so when it came time to maybe maintain that home you just had to maintain the lower level or first level of log on that home. Um, the one on the far right then is maybe some vertical. We have some vertical options as well. This top right corner uh, is a vertical cedar, double uh, rustic channel cedar. The one on the lower right hand right here is now an LP product. Um, this is a board and batten product and uh, LP smart lap siding. Um, we're getting into a, a little bit of that now with the with with the timber frame and exposed beam packages. So um, here are, here are some homes that that feature the LP smart lap siding. Um, you'll see. Uh, I'll start with the one on the right hand side here. Um, again got a lot of different textures going on on the outside here. He has some stone on the bottom, um, some lap siding, and then also some shakes up in the gable. And now you can see here the accents, the timber accents, the exposed beam accents. You'll see the, the posts here, the square posts, and you can just see a hint of that, um, that timber truss in the gable of that porch. <clears throat> Here's another one. Um, he did round version. So you'll see he's got round vertical corners here, 
round trim around the, the windows and doors. And he also has some shake up in the gables, breaks up those horizontal lines along with the stone. And then uh, flare posts also here at the, at the covered porch. Again, three different textures here, here, and here. I, I really think it, it looks sharp, really adds uh, a lot of dimension to the home. So um, another option that we do offer, this, this first came into play where we had uh, customers that needed a, uh, a fire retardant exterior facade on their home out west um, where uh, wildfires are, are prevalent. So um, the concrete log siding um, basically goes on a framed wall, a conventionally built wall, uh, typically two by six is what we provide, and then the concrete log gets applied to the exterior of the home. Um, number of different styles with this concrete log. There's a round version, you see in the two pictures, one on the left, one on the lower right, and then also a, a square or a flat version with a vertical corner as well. Um, typically more expensive than, than even a full log home, but uh, you know if that's that's the look you're trying to achieve, then, then so be it. And then, then you do the log on the inside. You do maybe half log on the inside uh, or uh, uh, put the timber accents on the inside. Um, so, um, the windows. Um, windows are uh, uh, another item that uh, that can certainly um, add to the home as well. Uh, the, it basically comes down to three. To, it basically comes down to the frame around the window is what it comes down to. Uh, the glass is pretty much all the same with the windows, um, and then the different uh, materials used around the window will determine the price and, and the look of the window. Um, so you see at the top, on the top right hand side of the slide here, uh, aluminum clad, fiberglass, and then vinyl. So vinyl is over on the far left here. You'll see the frame um, is, a, uh, is an almond color. Trying to point to the to the frame of the window here. Hopefully you guys can see that. So um, the glass is framed with vinyl. The inside, the beauty of, of vinyl is that it's maintenance free exterior and interior. The in, inside of that window is going to be vinyl as well. Uh, the jams can be wood. The jams of the window can be wood. Um, but uh, um, maybe one reason people move away from vinyl is uh, is the color options. Um, it basically comes in a white and almond color. And uh, in one of the uh, the higher series, it comes in a, a dark brown. So if a customer is, is looking for um, that green color or red or, or blue or even black is becoming very popular, um, then they'll move into a, what is an aluminum clad window. And that's what you see on the right hand side, this picture right here. <clears throat> so um, now this type of window becomes, it is a wood window. It is a wood frame window. So the glass is framed with wood. You see wood on the inside of the window, um, but then the the outside of the window, the exterior of the window, has an aluminum cladding that is applied to it, and then it, it's an extruded aluminum powder coat painted to virtually whatever color uh, that you want that you're trying to, to to match. There is one window in between these two, which is a fiberglass window, very similar to to the vinyl type window. Um, it's produced out of a, a fiberglass material. Um, there is some more color options in that. Um, you can get a, a dark. You can get some darker colors in that. You can get a dark brown, a dark uh, wild black. Um, they have not uh, come out with a green for us yet, but uh, um, hopefully that's down the road. But uh, we'll see. Um, so the windows uh, can certainly um, um, add a lot to the home. But the vinyl windows. Um, you might be limited to some of the shapes and styles. You might have to add some more trim pieces in there um, than aluminum clad, but uh, still a very energy efficient window. Um, their most energy efficient window through the company that we carry, Pella, is, is their vinyl window. So, so here's some different uh, some different roof styles um, to help uh, to help protect or shade the home. Um, there's a couple different features that you can do. The one on the left hand side here is a western roof, uh, which I spoke about a little bit earlier, um, where, you, where you pop that, uh, that center portion or that peak of the roof out um, a foot and then uh, we'll raise it. Um, 
again, no no uh, ventilation or structural integrity to that. Just simply the, the look, um, breaking up that that big expanse of roof. Uh, the overhang the overhangs here at Golden Eagle. We start with a minimum of two foot. Um, the one the picture here of the western roof, that uh, that is a three foot um, rake extension on there, and three foot on the eaves as well. Um, the other option, if you if you want to keep the the overhangs to a minimum, maybe a, a, like our two foot, I wouldn't go any shorter than that. But uh, the other option is maybe a flying rake. So you'll see here what a flying rake is. You can see my cursor down on the lower right hand side. It starts out at a two foot overhang, and then once it gets up to the peak here, you'll see it, it juts out to a four foot. So we call that a, a flying rake. And what that does, that'll help protect uh, um, the glass here, the gable end, um, in those in those hot um, summer summer days where that where that sun is very high, and it'll help protect that glass and um, help cut down on some of the sun that gets into the home. Uh, but then in the winter time, where the sun is lower, um, it still lets in a, not, a lot of natural light and warms up that home a little bit. So in this flying rake uh, picture here too, you'll see again. The, um, vinyl windows on here on his home. Um, I like pointing out in this picture as well a lot of a lot of maintenance free products um, on this home here. He did he did the vinyl windows. Uh, he's got the aluminum spindles you'll see here across the front. So those are those would be maintenance free. He also did a maintenance free deck. Um, fascia board here and maintenance free decking. Um, all the fascia and soffits as well are pre-painted aluminum, so less to maintain there as well. So um, we've taken a lot of steps um, right to, right from the start at Golden Eagle to help reduce the maintenance as well on your home. Okay, um, outdoor living spaces. A lot of our homes are built uh, out in the wilderness. Uh, you're on a on a on a river or a lake or you have a mountain view and you certainly want to bring that that outside in you want to take advantage of that view that you have and there's a number of different ways that you can do that uh, the first step would be basically putting a deck uh, if you can see my cursor on the on the left hand side picture here that's I think we're, we're familiar with the deck very open feel um, still need some railing around there but uh, a simple deck with uh, with some nice log railing and posts so now let's say you want to use that uh, during uh, while it's raining or even even snowing. Um, you can put a cover on that on that deck. So now we just we just change it into a covered porch. That's the step up from a deck, um, a covered porch. This is a shed style covered porch right here. So let's say you want to take it to the next level. You want to be out there and and uh, and not have to worry about the bugs and and mosquitoes. Our state bird is is, is mosquito in Wisconsin here so we're very well how 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 bugs can uh, can ruin a nice evening so um, screen porches are very popular so that cover porch we just added to the home we'll put screen in between those posts and a lot of times we'll put screen underneath the decking as well those little buggers can, can come up through the decking and then the next step up from there would be a three seasons room which now we'll take the screen and we'll actually put windows in here a lot of times um, there's storm windows or we have a nice vinyl um, four track sliding window system that you can put in there, window and door system. Um, so a three seasons room um, is simply a deck with, with windows in it now. Um, still no foundation in there, it's not a heated space. Um, it's, a, it's a three seasons room. Um, and then the step up from there would be a four seasons room. Now this is this is basically an extension of the home. It's going to have a foundation underneath it. Um, it's going to have heat in it. Typically, it's going to have the windows in it, um, like you would in the rest of the home. And uh, it, it's simply a room with a lot of windows. Four seasons rooms, sun rooms, uh, people will call them. But you have the same features that you would in the rest of the house. Uh, just trying to bring those those outdoor living spaces in. Um, take advantage of that view, like I said. So if you want to take it a step further and actually be outside, um, we, we've designed a lot of spaces, um, a lot of features 
uh, of that home to be used outside. Um, I mean, look, look at this big sprawling uh, patio. Um, you, know, you can see the nice log stairs off to the left that we extended down to his patio. Matches the rest of his house, the stain and the post. Um, you can even see the stone on the front of the bar here. Matches the stone on the rest of the home. Nice big covered porch here for the guests even inside the home. Um, could come out and view um, the party down below. And uh, we're not just limited to um, homes. We've designed a lot of spaces, a lot of pool pubs, uh, outdoor cabanas, uh, poolside pavilions. Um, we'll, again, use the same log, the same stain, same corner style, the same stone as, as we did on the home. Um, so it complements the, the home very well. So not just limited to two homes. We, we've done a lot of other structures too. So, so keep that in mind when, when designing uh, um, your home and, and the rest of it, the outdoor features as well. So um, that, uh, that pretty much brings the, the, the presentation to a, a conclusion. Um, I'll go through some of the questions here. Uh, I see one uh, for decorative beams. Uh, Jim asks, are you able to do decorative beams of 30 foot long? Is that feasible? And uh, yes, mo most certainly you can. Um, depending on, on the, um, the size, um, or I'm sorry, the style that you want to do, sometimes uh, we'll have to add a, a black bracket in there. But uh, yeah, with, with those being non-structural, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Um, um, 30 foot long if it's a round log post, yeah, no, a round log that you want to use, that, that's no problem. Um, sometimes the timbers, we, we add uh, that black metal bracket in there, in there to help support the, the truss. But uh, yeah, most certainly 30, 30 foot uh, is not a problem. Is there any other questions that might be out there? Um, and another one pop up from Janice. Uh, how well do deck posts handle climatic weather? Um, haven't had an issue really with, with posts. Um, usually the posts that, that we have for the exterior of the home, um, all of them, all the posts that are going to be in contact with, uh, with the concrete or the treated deck are going to be borate dipped. So borate Dip means it's a it's a salt brine solution um, that helps prevent it against uh, rot and decay. So, um, and some of the other posts can be cedar as well. Some of our six inch uh, posts are cedar. So, um, usually not a problem. And uh, if you're concerned about it, yeah, we'll make sure definitely make sure they're borate dipped or there is some caps that, that you can put on it as well. Uh, Bob has a question. What is the expect expected maintenance and frequency for a log exterior home? Uh, for a log home exterior. Uh, it's typically what, what we've seen in the past from customers, it's four to six years uh, maintaining a clear coat on that home. Um, it's not uh, where you're stripping the stain and restaining and sealing. What it is, most uh, the stain products are going to be a stain and then a sealer over it. That clear sealer is, is what protects the stain and the log underneath it. So you keep up on that clear sealer and that's, that's what's going to help protect the home. That's what's going to protect the home. Um, and I see customers going back every four to six years. I give it a range because every home is different. Um, how it's orientated to the sun, um, you know, if you're out in the plain states or tucked in the woods, um, it, it'll, it'll certainly affect uh, the longevity of that stain. So, um, you know, that, that south side will probably be the, the first side to, to go. The south and maybe west side will be the, the side you'll have to maintain first. But uh, that's the beauty of the clear sealers now is you can do just the south and the west side um, and maybe that north and that east side can, can wait a year or two. So good question, but uh, every, every home's a little different. That's why I give it a range about four to six. Um, can you tell us something about optional finished basements? Yes, uh, we do a lot of them. Um, that's one thing that we should add. Um, we do... Uh, we do a number of finished basements. It is really dependent on the lot. If you can, the lot will determine, you know, if you have a nice slope to the property, yeah, definitely um, 
put a put a walkout wall on the back side of that home. A walkout wall is that foundation. Um, it, it's an exposed foundation wall that's typically framed. We you had some natural light in there with some big patio doors and windows, and you finish that off as as you would the rest of the home. And you had some serious square footage uh, for minimal cost. So another question: uh, When building a timber frame home, do you use SIPs? Yeah, um, if it, if it's a structural timber frame home. That's probably uh, one of the most common ways to do it is with a SIP panel. Uh, the timbers then become structural, trusses become structural, and you have to frame or put panels in between there. Um, and a lot of times, yeah, SIPs are used. Yep, yep. Good question from Jay. Do you sell in Canada? We sure do. Um, we've sold in, like I said, 49 states and Canada. I probably missed that last little blurb there. So good question, Jay. Yeah, we do sell in Canada. We actually have an independent proprietor up there in Ontario. So, yeah. With manufactured stone, uh, Janice asked, uh, can you pick out the colors? Yes, um, we, we just updated the colors as well here. The, um, we, 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 start, we try to stay up with the trends um, in the market, so we just updated the dozen options that we he have here, and, uh, and our vendor has a, a number of, uh, probably a couple dozen more options that, that you can choose from. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that's the beauty of manufactured stone. As uh, you can choose the style and the color that you're looking for. All right, thank you, Justin. Thank you all for taking the time to join us this evening. Uh, a copy of this presentation will be sent to you all through email within the next 24 hours. And uh, if you do have any questions, uh, Justin's contact information is on this last slide, and his contact information will also be included in that email. So feel free to reach out to Justin. He can take care of you guys one on one.